Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to create a swinging rope in Unity using Burlet integration. For this version of the rope, we're not using any Unity hinge joint components. We're simply going to simulate the entire rope in one script. I find that using Burlet integration, we can make a much more realistic looking rope. Other than a rope, you can also make other cool things using Burlet integration. Currently, I'm making this slingshot game using Unity. By using the variation of the rope that we're going to create, I'll also show you guys how to create this rope bridge using Verlet integration. Firstly, before we get into the code, I'll talk a little bit about the basics of Verlet integration. But before we talk about Verlet integration, we're going to talk a little bit about Euler's approach in simulating physics. So one of the most basic approach to applying motion to our game object is to simply take the current position of the object and add the velocity to it based on a change in time. However, the idea of Verlet integration is that objects are going to continue to have the same motion based on previous positions. This means that we're not going to directly change the velocity like Euler's approach, but we're going to assume that the object will continue in uniform motion. We do this calculation by taking the current position and subtracting the previous position to get the velocity. So the code is mainly divided into two parts, which is simulating the rope and applying constraints. Simulating the rope is simply calculating the new positions based on the previous positions. Uh, this includes stuff like applying gravity or forces. After we simulate the rope, we're also going to need to apply constraints. For example, in our rope, we need to make sure that the two segments in the rope are keeping a certain distance apart. We're going to talk a little bit more about this when we're writing the code. So the first thing that we're going to do in coding is to create the rope using Unity's line renderer. And we're going to do this by keeping a list of points in script, and we're going to basically feed these list of points to Unity's line renderer for them to draw the rope. And in our script, we're going to call the point rope segment, and the rope segment is going to contain the current position and the old position in order to apply uh, and to simulate the rope. So for this tutorial, we're going to keep the distance between the two points as 0.25. So like the example that um, I've shown you guys in the beginning, we want the rope starting position to follow the mouse. So we want the starting point of the rope to be the current position of the mouse. But since input.mouse position is in screen point, we first need to convert this to world point for us to use it. We can do this by simply using Unity's API called screen to world point. And we're going to create 35 number of points uh, for drawing a rope. So after we created the starting point of the rope, we're going to iterate through the number of segments and keep attaching the points after each other. After we have a list of points, all we need to do is feed that list of points to the Unity's line renderer for them to draw. So in order to do this, we're going to make a function called draw rope. In draw rope, we're going to set the width of the line renderer and make an array of positions to be added to the line renderer. We can do this by iterating through the list of points that we created and adding this back to the array.
Now we can go back to Unity and see the rope that we've created. We first need to create an empty game object in the scene, which is first going to have the line render as the component to draw the rope. Then we're going to add uh, attach the script that we've created. If you don't want the rope to be initially pink, then you can also make a default material in Unity and apply this material to the rope. And now if you hit click, you can also see all the points that we've created in the script. Now that we have the rope, we can actually go back and simulate the rope in our script. And the first thing that we need to do is calculating the new position of the rope. We can do this by taking the current position of the rope and subtracting it by the old position of the rope and getting the new velocity. And after that, we're going to apply a force of gravity to individual points in the rope. You can play around with this number and make it uh, whatever value you want. So once we have the simulation, we're going to need to apply constraints to individual points. So the first constraint of our rope is that the first position of the rope will always follow our mouse position. Our second constraint is that two points in the rope will always need to keep a certain distance apart, which we set out to be 0.25 in our tutorial. So I'll give a little example of what I mean by keeping a certain distance apart for each point. So let's say we want the distance between the two points to be always 10, but uh, the simulation ends up making the distance between the two points to be 20. We're going to need to move the points inward by 5. In another case, the simulation can also make the distance between the two points to be shorter than the limit. So for example, in this case, if the limit is 10, but the simulation ends up making the distance between the two points to be 5, then we're going to need to move the two points outward. In this case, we're going to need to move individual points outward by 2.5. So in order to calculate this error, uh, we calculate the magnitude of the two current points first. Uh, we'll call this value d. Uh, we subtract d from the required distance and divide it by d. This gives us how much percentage in terms of d of two points we need to move it by. For example, uh, using our last example, if the limit of the two points are 10, uh, but the current distance of two points is 5, then we need to move outward each point by 2.5. Applying this formula, uh, 10 minus 5 uh, divided by 5 will give us 1. We then multiply 1 by uh, d, which is 5. 
5 is the additional total distance we want to add uh, to both points. Since we want to add half this amount to individual points, we would divide it by 0 0.5. Notice that if the s value is positive, we want to move the points outward. And if it is negative, we want to move the points inward. So once you have the constraint function, we're going to need to apply the constraint many times. In our tutorial, we're going to apply the constraint 50 times. The more constraint that you apply to the rope, the more accurate the result will be. You can tweak this value however you want to suit your simulation. So this is basically it for coding. Once we head back to Unity, you're going to see the rope following the mouse position and doing its simulation. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked the tutorial, hit the thumbs up button. In the next video, we're going to use the Burlet integration to create a rope bridge.